Here we will show you in simple words, with example the truth about gender pay gap. You don't have to be a mathematician to understand this simple trail of logic. Let's jump right into it. The gender pay gap is one of the most ridiculous propaganda propagated by radical feminist movement. It has been years that such falsified data was debunked. But still some people are either not aware about it, or, maybe they are just bad at common sense. Whatever the case may be, it also shows how lasting damages of a false information stays even years after it has been corrected. Let's start with a point on common sense. Think about it. Wages are one of the most expensive outgoings for a business. So, if this claim were to be true, why all employers are not lining up to hire women? Why aren't they reducing their expenses by one-third? Do these multi-billion dollar business owners have math problem? I don't think so. As it turns out, feminists and celebrities who still cry about wage gap are the ones who have the math problem. Let's break it down with an example. There is this widely known claim that women earn 77 cents for every dollar that a man earns for the same amount of work. Nothing could be far from the truth. The reality, however, is that when all men combined earn one dollar, all women combined earn 77 cents. In other words, if median income of 10 men is one dollar, and median income of 10 women is 77 cents, as per feminist logic, this is the wage gap. It just doesn't matter if those 10 men are working more, have better education, or what their work profile is. There is one more claim, that says women get paid less for the same job that men do. Let me make it easier with a real-life example of Tony and Tina. Both of them work as doctor in the same hospital, hospital, doing the exact same work. Should they be paid same? At first, you might think, yes. Why not? But, hold your horses for a minute. Before answering this let us dive into details. Tony comes in for work at 7 a.m. in the morning while Tina comes at 9 a.m. because she doesn't want to compromise her beauty sleep. Tony attends whooping 200 patients in a day and takes only 15 minutes lunch break. While Tina attends only 100 patients in a day and goes off to a fancy restaurant to have lunch with her friends which takes about one and a half hour. Also, Tony goes home at 9 p.m. while Tina goes home at 6 p.m. because she wants to make she leads a balanced life. We don't have any objection for choices of either Tina or Tony. They have the complete freedom to choose for themselves. But now, if Tina, at the end of the month joins the feminist rally and shouts, me and Tony both are doctors. But because of patriarchy, I am being paid less than him. How fair is that? Now imagine Tina's feminist friend who works at McDonald, with a gender study degree, flipping burger, working same hours as Tony, shouting wage gap, because she earns less than Tony for same number of hours. Now, answer the same question. Should Tony, Tina, and Tina's friend all have same wages? You don't have to be a rocket scientist to know that the answer is a big fat no. Now, let's see what some hard facts have to say for these claims. AAU, American Association of University, shows that the actual gap shrinks to 6.6 .6 cents when you factor in parameters like education, hours, occupation, and choice men and women make for their careers. But why? Why should there be any gap at all? Answer to this is the word choice. Choice here is of great significance. The small gap that does exist has nothing to with women being paid less. But, it's about individual choices that men and women make while selecting their careers. In fact, U.S. Department of Labor has published a study in year 2009 which drew exactly the same conclusion. One more experiment was conducted at Georgetown University. They came up with list of five best-paying career choices for college majors along with percentage of male and female admissions in those fields. Out of those five, four fields had majority male students. Why? Was anyone stopping women from getting admission in those majors? No, it was all about the choices that those men and women made. Wait for some more, they made a list of worst five paying majors as well. Guess the outcome? Yes, you are absolutely right. Out of five, in four of those fields women were dominating. Was anyone forcing women to take admission there? No. Again, choices were made differently by men and women. There is one more. An experiment conducted by Claudia Golden, professor of economics at Harvard University. It showed that the wage gap is also job hour specific. The professions such as business, which does not have flexible work hours, have higher wage gap compared to the field of science and research where work hours are extremely flexible. In the Chicago MBA study, 
it was seen that women with kids have higher wage gap than women without kids. We are not saying that women should abandon their kids to earn more money, but it is one of the many variables which indicates that gender alone is not responsible for median pay gap. AAU and Labor Department both concluded that there are so many variables that it is impossible to cover everything in one single study that is why it is completely wrong to say that wage gap is completely gender-driven 